Amazon to lay off 9,000 more workers after earlier cuts. I don't know how many of you relate, but a personal level this last few years has left me quite shaken. In 2021, I remember thinking how tech really proved its worth by so quickly assisting our economies through the pandemic with e-commerce, video conferencing, and work from home. Sure, things felt a bit crazy, but I remember thinking how lucky I was to land in tech as a career and that it was hard to see a future anytime soon where the world wouldn't value tech workers highly. Skip to today, and I'm honestly wondering how long I have. We've had a massive influx of new tech talent over the last few years, and now we see this dramatic turnaround in hiring, which will likely make it significantly harder to get a good tech job in the near future. And in addition to this, we have tools like GPT, potentially disrupting our careers on a timescale, best viewed on the scale of months. It doesn't help that I'm going through a lot in my personal life at the moment too, but I've never felt so vulnerable about what the future holds. I guess I should just be grateful that we had a good run while it lasted, but it's hard to think like that when people depend on you to have things figured out. Anyway, I hope everyone involved in these layoffs lands on their feet. I was in tech during the dot-com bubble. It was the same then as today. In the early 2000s, there were two open tech jobs for every qualified person. Businesses like MicroSkills, no longer around, sprung up to teach basic network administration and other IT skills and do job placement. When the market contracted, a lot of people who were treading water or making more than their role could afford got pushed out. It's no different now. Instead of network admin boot camps, it's coding boot camps. Lots of people have been building a lot of dumb stuff, more than usual, for the last several years, and the market is correcting. The good news is that what came after that contraction was a huge wave of innovation that became known as Web 2.0. Most of the unicorns you're familiar with today came out of that period. Keep your chin up and you'll see. We've had a massive influx of new tech talent. About one out of 100 people I interviewed actually know how computers work. We still hired about 10 out of 100. That's maybe one in 1,000 CVS. Skip to today, and I'm honestly wondering how long I have. How long you have to do what? To learn. To make money. You will find a way to make money. I have lived with $2 per day, and with $200 per day, and it's fine. Sometimes you have to steal some bread, but it's not the end of the world, and you have a lifetime to learn. Just don't stress too much. Tech has ebbs and flows. Your job does not define you. How long you have to do what? It seemed fairly obvious from the GP how long they have before they get laid off and struggle to find employment in the technology industry. I have lived with $2 per day and with $200 per day, and it's fine. I've lived on zero day, seeing as I've literally been homeless and dead broke in my life, but today I have a demanding career, a spouse, children, dogs, a home, etc., and all of them are massively dependent on me. I don't think I'm personally at risk of losing my job today, but, like the GP, I also have to regularly engage with my brain to keep my anxiety about the future of the technology industry at bay. Edit, and that's just me, I'm a US citizen, and CBP can't come deport me because my visa expired. There are other things at stake here for a lot of people beyond the simple act of earning an income. I have a demanding spouse. Many people can relate to that. On a more serious note, there is not much we can do about all this, really. We neither have the complete picture, nor know what hides behind the corner. So relaxing a bit, while still taking the time to learn some new skills, is not bad advice. We can vote. We can unionize. We can push for better healthcare, education, labor, etc. policy. The status quo is the problem here IMO, which I believe is the source of much of the anxiety many of us experience in this era. About one out of 100 people I interviewed actually know how computers work. I know you're exaggerating, but it doesn't change that dev is extremely saturated. And toxic job market has shown being good, 
won't protect you from being filtered. It honestly shows that a lot of people haven't done interviews with the comments. You're 100% right with the one 100 people knowing how a computer works. I legit have to ask Fizbers, and I would like 4 out of 5 people can't do it. Like maybe we'll see the industry require the bare minimum of actually knowing how to write a basic program for a six figures job, but we aren't gonna go anywhere as a profession. Whether or not you should be concerned is really dependent on where you sit in the industry. Former Beaster, who did a 90 day boot camp and trying to find a job. Oof, good luck. Have a BS in CompSeer and work on back end distributed systems with several years of experience you'll have no problem finding a gig. The vast majority of overhiring was with engineering adjacent roles. Think project managers, recruiters, HR, etc. When workers don't negotiate together, it's trivial for employers to reset compensation expectations like this. If you work for a company like Amazon and you don't want to be laid off, the only thing you can do to move the needle is join a union. You can also be a top performer, but it's not clear how big of a difference that makes. Top performers with big salaries make big targets for layoffs as well. Unions are inefficient because they promote mediocrity, regression to the mean in terms of talent, and union bosses wield abnormal influence. Mediocrity for all is better than exceptional outcomes for me and shit for everyone else. Do you like communism? where everyone gets equal outcome. True equity. Like in Cuba, Russia, Soviet Union, DPRK, or Campesia during Pol Pot's time. Those affected will be notified mid-April. So the question on a lot of employees' minds is, do we try to relocate in time for the May 1st RTO and risk getting fired? Or do we wait to see if we're part of the layoffs? and then try to relocate with the remaining two weeks we have left. If you're good, you're already looking. If you're not good, or you don't think you're good, you're waiting. Severance, unemployment, etc. Broadly speaking, of course, exceptions as always. If you are good and single. If you have a family to look after, you cannot casually have your partner quit their job, your kids to switch schools in the middle of the year, break your lease mortgage, and move states overnight. There are real transaction costs for employees that do not allow for proper free market function. By the way, all these costs would be zero if remote work was legally mandated. But remote work showed how high they would have to pay to retain talent in a real free market environment. So unsurprisingly, everyone forced a return to office policy. If you're good, you're already looking. But where do you go as an overpaid FANG employee? Amazon, Google, Microsoft, etc. all have layoffs. You're likely not overpaid at Amazon versus other FANGs based on changes to equity comp. If you're somewhere where you were overpaid, I hope you saved accordingly now that you're going back to a 150kk year job. As others have mentioned, you might not be able to find a 300kk year job, but you should be able to find something. At $150,000 in the Bay Area, you're going to be renting and spending two hours a day on public transit. Those roles made sense as a career stepping stone up to home ownership and family supporting roles. I don't anticipate too many senior folks taking them unless they get exceptions to go remote or they already have mega home equity rent control. I'm curious and asking in good faith, $150,000 in car seem to translate to just over $100,000 take home. Looking at Zillow, there seem to be an abundance of places all over the Bay Area, around $2,500 1 BDRM and $3,500 2 BDRM which sound not too bad on one and two incomes respectively, just like what everyone else is doing, around a third of your income. I don't get why you're assuming one would have commute to as a day. Is transit that bad, even if you're close to where you work? I honestly don't get it fully. Don't get me wrong, it sucks, and I wish housing was cheaper, but I think that's just the way it is now for everybody that has to work in person somewhere.
and 25% of your take-home income spent on housing isn't too bad at all, and that's at the lower end of the spectrum GP is talking about here, 150kk. Seems the halcyon days in tech are coming to an end pretty quickly. Maybe when the inflation starts dying down faster, plus the AI craze will continue to even greater heights, then we'll see it coming back in full swing. Either way, it is almost certain that a large amount of people working in these companies don't contribute much to the generated income, and now the executives have been given an excuse to perform mass layoffs without scaring off the shareholders. I've been feeling a lot better about ignoring the countless recruiter contacts from the major tech companies the past couple years. On one hand, I felt like I was blowing major opportunities by not trying. But something just felt off when receiving so many sudden contacts from the largest of companies offering remote work, despite working in tech for over a decade and never hearing from them before. Amazon along with Google and everyone else way overpaid for tech talent the last few years, which has made it a lot harder for small companies to compete. My company lost a lot of engineers of varying quality to big tech companies. The factory of the future will be a man and a dog. I am curious about these layoffs. The number impacted in the past year seems to be between 100 250,000 tech employees. Are there that many good paying jobs remaining within the tech industry that they can reshuffle to? Are people finding placement? Are coders now competing for less technical jobs as well? I've heard stories of recruiters who were seeing one resume per week, now seeing 300 resumes per week, but I'm not noticing any sentiment of widespread panic on HN or even Reddit. Flagged.